Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, and today we are looking at some more custom cards made by Hazash for the Dawnguard expansion that he has made. So, just a reminder, these are all entirely custom cards, uh, but that doesn't mean that they're any less important. They're all still really cool and really wonderful stuff that we can only just wish were added to the game. But anyway, um, so today we are looking at consume cards. So, some of these you may have seen in previous sets before. Some of them obviously will be very new. Um, we're just going to go through them today, I'm going to give my opinion on each and every single one of them, uh, and I'll have a link down to this in the description if you want to have a look through them yourself. And yeah, feel free to share your opinions in the comments, whether you like some cards, whether you'd buff or nerf a few here and there, just, yeah, you're more than welcome to say whatever you want. But, um, as Hazash has mentioned, Consume's a mechanic that was kind of added with the Moons of Elsewhere DLC, DLC expansion pack. But not really much happened with it, so making a Dawnguard expansion with a lot of vampires, a, a mechanic like Consume just fits perfectly, so it does obviously make a lot of sense to kind of make. So first we have Castle Volokar, which we've seen before, um, just as a reminder, it's a very nice mechanic for a lot of these vampire decks, because the two main things that vampires utilise in this set are the Nightfall mechanic and just Consuming Creatures. And today we'll be looking at the consuming side, but you've all hopefully seen Nightfall before uh, from looking at these sets. If this is your first of the custom card videos, I would highly recommend going back to watching the very first one, uh, at least, because that one explains Nightfall properly. I think later down the line we explained also about how Nightfall will kind of give all your creatures cover, etc, etc. But no, um, Castle Volokar, lovely card. Uh, very good for kind of opening your engines for your vampire or just even your nightfall decks or consume just whatever it is It's a nice opener So first we're starting with the imbued reachman Which is kind of part of the imbued card sets which are all about when they get into the graveyard You can consume these cards and a bonus effect will go off In fact, they're even shown in a little color when you're in the graveyard um, If you ever have a look in there while playing a consumed deck but as you can see, it's a very nice one that fits in with the way that Reachman cards play off, as they are all about kind of buffing your other cards. So the fact that you'll get a big chunky buff for consuming down on this guy is really nice. Uh, one thing that they have mentioned here is the concern of Ruin Shambler uh, basically causing a massive swing in the game. And if you don't know which one Ruin Shambler is, it is this card, which will consume the top three cards of your deck and... Um, basically, for each one, it, that is a, uh, you know, for each one that is a creature, I don't know why I can read there, it will gain plus one, plus one, but obviously when you add this on top, that would be plus three, plus three, just for consuming one of these. So, it can get a bit powerful with one card, but then again, Ruin Shambler is something, I don't know why I held that for four seconds. <laughs> Ruin Shambler is a card that if you hit it with any form of removal or you even silence it, it goes back to being very weak. So as much as it would be a very scary thing to see, it's not too big of a worry because it's just something that would get your opponent's removal kind of baited out or get their aggro forces to kind of focus on that instead. In all, all in all, I'd say this is a nice card. Um, the stats, I'd say, work very well for it. Because the thing is, even though it does become a free cost, which is worth 5-5 five, five if you include this effect, it does need to still get off its effect, and it takes quite a while to get it off, making it kind of distance between the value of its points. So I'd say it's a very nice card. And it's always nice to see more Reachman cards, because I always wanted to make like a proper Forsworn deck, but they just never added enough to the game, sadly, for it. Right, next we have the Red Water Fug which is a 2 cost 4-1 consume card, which when summoned will consume a creature to gain 1 magicka this turn. Again, it's a simple effect, it fits really well into agility, um, there isn't too much more to say about it I guess. It works a bit like Mountain Lion, but as a consume card, so it fits into the decks. I, yeah, I, the stats are really good for it, it's, it's just a very nice card. <laughs> There's nothing else I can really say for it, because there wasn't really much too much with like consume in agility so having another card like this especially as they've mentioned a card for the two cost slot it just works really well now yeah. next we're going on to a card that you may recognize before as we have covered it but i'll quickly just go over it again in case you haven't watched that video 
It's the Blood Ravener, which is a 2 cost beast plus vampire with the same stats as before, a 4 power and 1 health. And whenever it slays a creature, it consumes it. And when you consume a creature, heal a friendly creature. So obviously you may look at this and go, hang on, when it slays something, it will consume it. And then, you know, it will probably end up trading. Yes, but obviously you can use items, you can attack monsters with zero power. This thing isn't always just going to nuke itself, but it's very nice that it has this strong power to really utilise the fact that it has a good slay ability for healing your bigger units, meaning that even later in game, because it has got four power, it might still be able to get at least one use. Even if it is seen a bit slow in those later rounds, the fact that it's a two cost means that it's not diverting your entire play. So, again, it's a very nice card. We've covered it before, and yeah, let's move on. Next, we have the Markov Cannibal, a four cost, four, four, based off Namira's Cultists with some very good card art, and I'm saying it because of the cool Solar Eclipse and nothing else. Um, <laughs> someone put three imbued cards, uh, imbued creatures into your discard pile, and whenever she pilfers, it will consume a creature. So... This is really nice because the imbued cards are all the ones that, when they're in your discard pile and they're consumed, have an additional effect. The fact that it gives you re free random imbued creatures means it doesn't take anything from your deck. It's, you know, putting things that could be from other archetypes that or attributes that you don't have in your deck. So you might be running a scout deck and it might put a strength card in your discard pile. Could put an intelligence card or so on. And the fact that when she pilfers... It will cons you'll get to choose a creature to consume in your discard pile. That kind of means that you have cards that you're ready to get the imbue effects off of because of this, and it means that you can kind of go further with it. It's a very cool card, and definitely something that I think you could fit it into quite a few decks realistically as its own little thing, because it could just go into a pilfer deck as it is, and then the pilfer abilities does become a bit RNG-based, but it could just be a bit of banter but i could see it yeah more going into these kind of nightfall consumed decks very cool card it's nice that it fits in with the lore as well being like an amira's cultist now we have our legendary um yeah this is the legendary of the set because this one we covered i think we covered it like in the last video as well so we'll probably have a very quick skim of that afterwards we'll go to the vampire's thrall a one cost breton with zero power and one health and while on the board, friendly vampires have regenerate. A very strong keyword, especially with some of the bigger vampires. However, this is a one health card. A stray firebolt. A stray forked bolt will just eliminate this person unless they give it some form of buff. Anyway, the rest of its effect is when vampires fall is consumed, so when it's in the discard pile and it's consumed, nightfall will happen and you get one random blood magic spell into your hand. Honestly, this card, I'd say, is really outstanding and very much would push these new vampire cards to a higher level. Because not only is it something where, if you play it early game, your opponent's going to go, okay, I know what you're playing now, chump. And then their cards of high health, uh, their vampires of high health, like the drain with one power and five health, that one becomes a very spooky thing to see early on. I mean, it means you just go for this first, unless they put guards in the way, and then you kind of have to just use your removal or silencing to kind of stop this. But at the same time, if you play it late game, or if it just gets yeeted into the graveyard early, it has that consume ability. And not only is Nightfall obviously really good because of the insane amount of synergy that you can pull off of all the cool cards from these sets, but just getting a two-cost blood magic spell to your hand could always be really fun and it was something i really liked about vampire decks the blood magic spells but you could only get them from like a couple units so it didn't really get used too often but having another card like this which can get you a random blood magic spell i think is very nice and very much something that can fit into the early and late game of your kind of plays and it really helps um give castle volikar a lot more use for those pure vampire decks because it means that even if you've only got a couple consume cards, then, you know, you've got your imbued cards as well. So, yeah, I think they work really well together. And, obviously, thematically, it makes a lot of sense. 
And then finally, we've been over this recently, so we'll just quickly go over it again. The Ethereum Forge is a 5 cost support that allows you to consume a creature and put an Ethereum tool into your hand, which has the creature's power, health, but the cost of the card is double. So it's basically used for very cheap cards, like say Nord Firebrand, you get a zero cost uh, plus one plus one item, or something like that. But yeah, that's pretty much how Ethereum Forge worked. There's a lot more uh, details in a video I did like last weekend. But yes, this is the set. Uh, overall, I quite like it. I think the one thing I would like to have seen more would be a few more vampire cards with the word consume on. Because obviously we've got, this is an imbued card. This does consume, but it's just a Khajiit. Obviously, it makes sense to just be a Khajiit. This is a beast plus vampire, so that's fine. Uh, Markov Cannibal, again, thematically, makes sense to be a Wood Elf. But, obviously, it would have been lovely to have it as a Vampire. Just having, like, maybe one card, which is just a Vampire, which consumes creatures. Like, just a generic common. That would be really nice to kind of push the set further a bit more. And give those Vampire decks a bit more, kind of, utility. But, yeah, that's the, um, that's part 16 of this set. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. There are two more to go over, so you'll get one more tomorrow, and then you'll get the big final next weekend. I know it's, it's, it's going to be heartbreaking, but I've really enjoyed looking over these sets. Uh, thank you so much to Hazash for making these, and thank you guys for watching. I know the views have kind of dipped a little bit on the more recent ones, but I'm happy to see that some of you guys are still around watching these. And yeah, uh, other than that, let me know what you thought of this set in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one.